This is Diana Sullivan in Austin, Texas, and today I'm going to show you how to do this faster, flatter mattress stitch, which looks absolutely wonderful, and it's quick to do, and it makes less bulk because it's only a half stitch from the edge. I'm going to show you how you can sew this from both sides of the work. To start with, you need to make swatches for practice. My swatch begins with a few rows of a contrasting color of waist knitting over 21 stitches. Then I switch to the swatch color and I knitted 25 rows over the 21 stitches and then a few more rows of waist yarn. This one has the green waist yarn and this one has the blue. Just makes it a little easier for me to describe things to you. You'll also need a tapestry needle I'm using a plastic one because I'm demonstrating on bulky knit. And you need some matching yarn for your seam. But in my case, to make this easy for you to see, I'm using bright orange yarn that doesn't match at all. Let's zoom in. To begin with, I need to thread my needle. A quick, easy way to thread any tapestry needle, metal or plastic, is to fold the yarn over the needle and then hold it between your thumb and index finger. Slide the needle out, squish the yarn with your fingers and push it through the opening. And there you are, the needle threaded very quickly. It's a nice way to thread even if your eyesight gives you a few problems because it's almost done by feel. Now we're going to start by looking at the side edge of the knitting. There's something you really need to observe on the side edge of knitting. Along the side edge of knitting there is a distinct loop and then there's a knot and then there's a loop and the loops are big. It's much easier to get your needle in the loop than this little bitty knot. So here's the loop. We're only going to use the loops. I like to put my swatches horizontally so that I can sew from one side to the other, which is kind of the way my hand moves. And I'm going to start by coming up through the first loop on one side. That's from bottom to top from the first loop. And I'm just leaving a piece of orange yarn here to grab later. And then I go to the other one and I'm going to go down the first loop from the knit to the purl side and then come up the second loop. I skipped that knot. I went down a loop and came up a loop. And then I draw that up, but not tight because I want you to see the little orange stitches between the two pieces of knitting. Now on this side, I go in the same spot that that orange came out of and I come up in the next loop and I'm skipping that knot and I'm really only going under one piece of thread. I'm not under two legs of a stitch. I'm really running along the very edge, just getting one strand. And I'll dry that up but just a little bit. Then go to the other side, go in where I came out, top to bottom, and come up through the next loop and this is repetitive. We go to this side, go in where I came out, come up through the next loop. I'm skipping those knots every time and only using the loop. Down through this loop, out through a new one, and down through the used loop, out through a new one. Let's unroll it so I can find that loop. There it is. and down through this loop and out through a new one. And now I have done enough that I can pull it up and you can see what happens. Look at that. The stitching vanishes, even though it's not a matching yarn. Of course, I would use a matching yarn on a real garment. And I just keep stitching like this down a loop and up a new loop, and down an old loop and up a new loop. And it really goes
goes pretty fast. But I told you that I was going to show this from the purl side as well as the knit side. So let's flip it over. Here we are looking at the back side. And I just want you to have an opportunity to see what a neat, tidy stitch it makes. Now you can grab both ends of the yarn and you can play with adjusting the tension however you want. I find it evens it up to pull in a couple of directions. And now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to work from side to side. So I'm putting these this way. And the first thing I'm going to do is see which piece of knitting I'm coming out of. So you see I just came out of a loop on the green piece. So now I'm going to go into a loop on the blue piece. So I go in here and now I can start doing the typical stitch from the purl side. I go through that next loop. It's so easy because the curl of the knitting makes those loops be right on top. Then I go back to that last loop I was in. So now the rhythm is go to the new loop and then go to that last loop on the other side and go to the new loop and go to that last loop on the other side. And every few stitches, pull it up so that you don't have a wide open seam. And you'll see these little dots of my contrasting yarn along the edge. But if you used matching yarn, you wouldn't have that. And I'm working on a table with a towel so things don't slide and I stay on camera, but you'll be a lot more comfortable. You'll be working in your lap. And give that a pull. I'd like to finish this seam, so I'm going to go right on over to the end to a new loop and an old loop. New, old, and the last one here happens to be my open stitch to the old loop, and the last one here happens to be my open stitch. I go over to the old loop and draw up my yarn, give it a vertical stretch and a little horizontal stretch, draw it up again a little bit. Let's see how we like this seam. First of all, from the purl side, I think it should look neat and tidy. And it does. See how little bulk is in that seam? That's because I'm only grabbing the very edge. That's a half stitch from the edge. That means also that my finished sweater, if this was a sweater, would be one stitch bigger. Now here's the seam from the right side. And I need to point it out to you in case you're not spotting it. It's got a little teeny bit of bumpiness. See this right here? That's the seam. And I'll hold it up so you can see how nearly invisible that thing is. I think it's very satisfactory. So a quick, easy way to do mattress stitch from either the knit side or the purl side. I hope you'll make your own swatches and practice this. This will come in handy many, many times when you're finishing your knits.